judgment in his own people. That's not something we think of very often. We think of the goodness of God and the grace of God. He overlooks our sin. He's allowed us to grow and develop. And sometimes we forget that their God is still a righteous God. So it's ironic, for the, even for the people of Israel, to think God's going to come and bring judgment. In fact, their response to Jeremiah's prophecies is to try and stand and fight. And Jeremiah has to tell them, no, this is from the Lord. You need to pack up and go. The irony that God would pronounce judgment against his own people. The irony that Jeremiah would have to speak that message. Verse 17, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them today. I have made you the fortified city, an iron pillar, a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but you will not, they will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. To have Jeremiah speak against the people, to have one man speak against a nation and prevail, not something you expect. And yet that's the promise that God has given to Jeremiah, and that's the promise that God has given to us. Jesus says, on this rock I will build my kingdom, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We are assured victory by standing on his word. So was Jeremiah. The irony that somebody was going to be scared on that day. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you. Somebody was going to be scared. It was either going to be the peoples of the land and the priests and the kings, or it was going to be Jeremiah himself, which has brought an idea into my mind that I'm pursuing it to see if it lines up scripturally throughout the entire Bible. But consider this. God magnifies the emotions that we show him. Jeremiah, if you're going to be afraid before them, I'm going to make you terrified before you. And yet we hear Paul say that in his weakness, that's when he's strong. When his trust is not on himself but on the Lord, that's when his strength becomes magnified. That's why Jesus says that you can say to this mountain, with just the size of a mustard seed of faith, you can say to this mountain, be removed. God magnifies the emotions that we give to him. I'm following that seed right here. Go right there. The irony that God would judge his people, the irony that God would send a novice prophet to deliver this nation, this message against kings, against princes, and against the people. The greatest irony, though, is that the foreigners would follow the voice of God while the faithful would not. Do you see what that message is? Verse 14. From the north, disaster we poured out on all who live in the land. Verse 15, I am about to summon, I'm about to call, I'm about to invite, I'm about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms. Their kings will come. They will come and set up against the thrones, the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all her surrounding walls, against all the towns of Judah. They will come. The foreigners are going to respond. While the faithful forsake. Judgment's coming because they've lost their way because they have turned to other gods, forsaken the way of the Lord, burning incense and worshiping those things that are not God. The foreigners would follow while the faithful would not. Jesus enters Jerusalem on that Easter weekend, that week leading up. The priests come and say, tell the crowds to be quiet. And Jesus says, if they're quiet, the stones are going to cry. There came a point in time when Jesus had to tell some who were rejecting him. He says, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For God, John came to show you the way of righteousness, and you do not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe. The foreigners would follow the voice, but the faithful would not. And on this day, 21st anniversary, 9-11, and the changes that have taken place in our world and our nation since then, 
what's happening right now, I bet if we got on a conversation that involved culture or politics, if we stayed in that conversation long enough, you would see anger start to arise. You would see frustration reach its limit. You would hear people who are exacerbated by everything we see going on in the culture and the leadership. We'll have all those conversations. So we might be able to conclude that on this day, a Sunday morning, as we're gathered together in the house of God, that there would be enraged attitudes about all that's going on across the nation. And our altars will be empty. Why is that? Foreigners will follow the faithful. call about identity? How do you answer the call about imagery? And how do you answer the call about the irony that we see in our world? A lot of emotion everywhere except where God says he'll meet us. What other nation is as great as ours that the Lord is so near when we pray to him? R.S. Father, we thank you that you're a God who's so close. That, Lord, we can answer the call. You receive us. You accept us. Father, all you ask is that we make that step. And you multiply what we offer before you. You multiply the loaves and the fish. You multiply the faith of those who would step out and say, I believe. Father, what do you want to do in us today? Father, I pray that before we leave, we have an understanding of the identity that you have given us. Not defined by ourselves. But we see how you're using us in time and eternity. How you've shaped us to things that interrupt our lives and intrude on our preferences and empower us to go into the world. Ways that go beyond our imagination. Father, in some cases this morning, what needs to be broken is our sense of self. How we've defined who we are. And what needs to be built is what you say about us. Father, what needs to be broken is the sense that if I move out of my queue, people will start to talk. What needs to be built up is that need to come and cry out before you because only you can change our world. Father, help us to understand what you're doing so that we can speak to others, that we can speak truth, that we can speak light into a dark world. This morning you have issued an invitation for And at the end of that invitation, I would imagine there are the letters RSVP, please.